Uh, you can see right there I got the MFOS sequencer. We've got the, uh, actually don't have a video about this yet, but this is an actual additional 16 steps in sync with the MFOS sequencer. Uh, this is an expander that I made, which you can chain together the way that Ray Wilson designed the PCBs. Got my Kenstone gate sequencer over here. Actually just took one of my uh, MOTM 440 filters and added on this, this great uh, Oberheim expander-like expansion to this, which allows you to select a bunch of different modes. And you can see here that you can select from F all the way back, all the way to zero. And it's just different combinations of the four poles of the filter, which gives you anything from band pass to high pass, multi, uh, multi-pole responses. But what we're here today to talk about is the low pass gate. Uh, I have been working on a PCB project with the approval of Don Buchla to release uh, a PCB through electromusic.com and just um, independently on my own. Got his approval, have been designing this over the last couple weeks. And actually this is the revision two PCB has finally come in. I spent all night last night building this and uh, found a couple errors that will be fixed by the final release, so nothing to worry about. I've got the offset control, which uh, its use varies upon the mode of the, uh, the low-pass gate. Got resonance, got a control uh, attenuator, which uh, is for the control input down here. Also have the direct CV input, which can be used for gate or any number of CV signals. And then also, both of these are summed together in an internal mixing stage, and there's an inverted out of that mixing stage here. The positive uh, normal out of that goes to control the actual... Uh, uh, low pass gate. Also in this build, just for example sake, I do have three audio inputs and uh, the normal deep switch modification. Now I want to go ahead and get started with showing you uh, what the low pass gate is capable of and what you can expect from the PCB. I have three VCOs run into this, directly into this. The out of this goes straight to the mixer. So it's basically three VCOs into the low pass gate, nothing else, okay, other than the CV control signals which come from either my MFOS sequencer up here at the top, uh, but actually, I am going to use a MOTM 300 VCO with a pulse signal to play basically everything I'm going to play for you today in this video. Uh, we can maybe get into some pitch sequences another time. But I have three VCOs. Let me go ahead and turn those up so you can hear them. So low VCO, mid VCO. We'll feed it three VCOs so we get a good strong signal here. Let's get those to an acceptable level. Now I have this set in amp uh, both mode right now. Offset is all the way up. Resonance is, uh, you're gonna notice that when I turn the resonance, it's opposite of what you'd expect because the pads on this particular build of the PCB are backwards. Again, that will be fixed in the final build of the PCB. So I've got a pulse signal, pulse wave coming into the CV control here from the MOTM 300 VCO. And let's turn the offset down so you can start to hear the effect of that. Okay, so it's like we're gating the signal, a little bit of a decay due to the, the Vactrol. Just to clarify, this unit has been built with VTL5C3 Vactrols from Perkin Elmer. My previous video uses VTL5C4's Vactrol, 5C4 Vactrols, excuse me. Let me go ahead and shorten uh, the, the pulse width cycle on the VCO here. Okay, so I made the pulse a little bit thinner. And you hear that decay is why a low pass gate is so special. So this is again, this is the both mode. If I go down here and change this to the amp mode, you'll hear it's a little bit thinner, okay? Volume goes down a little bit, but check it out. Let me go ahead and change the frequency of the VCO here. So as you can imagine, there's some pretty cool uses for uh, that type of control in amp mode. I'm gonna put it back to both mode. Now we get that decay back. Resonance control is not active in either the amp mode or the both mode. Uh, let me go ahead and I've got an LFO coming in to the control input. So let's turn that up a little bit and see how that sounds. Oh, excuse me, you know what? I've got that to a sample and hold. Let me put it to an LFO. bit of an on-the-fly adjustment. Here we go. So again, three VCOs, low pass gate, both mode, little external pulse width signal simulating a gate from a keyboard, 
and now a little LFO. We can change the rate on the LFO. And let me mess around a little bit with this frequency of the VCO here. Pulse width of the VCO. Turn these up. Uh, that's pretty exciting. mess around with this for a while but let's turn the control off let's go back to the or let's go for the first time to the filter mode I'm gonna open up the offset we'll go all the way down to just one VCO turn this to the filter mode turn this down offset down uh, now we get into some serious business turn this offset all the way down here pulse signal here in a second so let's just leave this like this try some add some resonance and again this is added by turning the knob backwards because of a mistake right now which will be corrected in the final version okay And even with the VTL 5C3, you can hear that excellent rubbery tone that you can hear in my other video. Uh, the decay is quite a bit shorter with this, and uh, we do get a bit of a different behavior with the actual onset of the resonance. There is a slight bit of a lag, uh, which you will notice if you're trying to do an on time sequence. But if you're recording to your computer and then syncing it up later, you're not going to have too much of a problem. Alright, well let me let me grab the uh, pull signal from the VCO and we'll plug it into uh, our sequencer up here at the top. We'll plug this into the actual MFOS sequencer. We can do the trigger out. Down. Let's move the trigger over to the gate output, which is quite a bit, uh, much a much thicker signal as you're going to hear right now. So now we're turning the offset all the way down. So theoretically, it can't go any lower. You can't filter all the all the way out when you're using a gate signal. So you'll notice. Let me turn this all the way up, and I'll flip the deep switch. Deep switch puts it right about to where it is, all the way at the lowest. Now we can go even lower. 